What's up, everybody? Welcome to the R Lounge. I'm not giving her another chance. In the past five years, I've been dealing with my mother-in-law treating me like trash. November, we moved and decided to cut contact. Basically because after five years of me being in her life, she just now decided to be nice to me. But only because I'm pregnant and she wants to take over. And by nice, I mean she was fake until she realized my husband and I wouldn't let her take over decisions about my pregnancy and she couldn't make it about herself. Then started the comments on my weight that I seemed to have gained a lot of weight in a few weeks, which was untrue since I had lost a lot of weight towards the beginning of my pregnancy. Now I was faking symptoms because, and I quote, she never had those symptoms so I had to be faking and talking about me behind my back to anyone she thought hated me. Well, I'm 30 weeks now and she's crying to my sister-in-law about how it's not fair we won't talk to her and she tried to fix the relationship before we moved, which is very untrue. But now I look like the bad guy because I don't want someone who has made it clear they don't like me around my baby. I'm just annoyed because she's trying to manipulate her way back in like she didn't spend five years treating me like I was less than human. Luckily, my husband is on my side, but is getting annoyed because she won't take a hint that we don't want to see her. And he knows if he says that, it's going to turn into me being manipulative and forcing him when a lot of the things we decided were things he wanted before me. I'm just tired. Our first response comes from off of their head. Don't worry about being the bad guy. You're protecting yourself and the baby. Enjoy the peace. Our next response from Angry Cat 11111. Send her a cease and desist letter from your dear husband, handwritten and signed by him. Mom, your continued attempts to contact me and my wife have now reached the point of harassment. This letter is to advise you legally that I do not want to have contact with you. You have treated my wife horribly for more than five years, and we do not want you in our lives for you to continue treating her in such a despicable manner. Do not contact us in any manner. Do not send third parties to contact us in any manner. Continued attempts to contact us will necessitate our taking legal action to assure us you will stop your harassment. If you contact us in person, we will call the police to have you trespassed. Dear husband, send via certified mail with return receipt to acknowledge with a signature that it was received by her. This will achieve one of two things. She will leave you alone or she will escalate. If she escalates, you can count on her showing up at your home or work, at which time you call the police who will tell her that she is trespassing and should leave you alone. You can get a copy of the police report to keep in your FU folder, a history of her bad behavior. Search Reddit for more info on the FU folder. Mute her number on your phones. She can leave texts and voicemails that you will save in the event you need to seek a restraining order. You never have to respond, but you should occasionally review to see what kind of crap she is trying to dish out. Who cares who she talks to about you? If those folks believe the crap she is abouting, you don't want them around either. Stay in contact with family who sincerely care about you and treat you well. The rest don't count and do not deserve any of your attention. Anyone who tries to intervene on mother-in-law's behalf are also cut off. It is time for you to remove any stressors from your lives. Make sure you register as private at your birthday location so no one knows you are there. Pass her to protect all your medical info so she cannot call to try and get info on you. Search Reddit for baby rabies. Lots of useful info to help you protect yourselves. I wish you a peaceful and swift birth. Congrats. On to the next story. I'm at Disney World with my mother-in-law and hating it. So, for context, my boyfriend is an only child of a single mother, so of course took a lot of work and sacrifice. My boyfriend wanted to treat his mom to a trip, since now he is working and making good money. I found it super sweet and of course I said yes, so I'm paying for my expenses and he is paying for both of them. Now, if you look at my posting history, I have posted in here in the past. My mother-in-law has never really been mean to me directly, but can be super moody and childish at times. So how has my vacation gone? First, she brought three bags to a 10-day trip. Two are big suitcases and a carry-on. She, of course, cannot move three suitcases. She barely can move one of the big ones. So at the airport, and when we got here, we had to go around carrying her stuff. She does not speak English and expects me to full-on translate for her everywhere. She won't go to the restroom alone in case she needs to speak with someone. My boyfriend doesn't speak English either, but he lets me do the talking and I'll tell him what's going on in the end. Not word to word translations of everything. She has spilled or dropped a million things in the hotel and the first park. Leave me there apologizing for her. And now the worst part? Nobody warned me that she snores like crazy. I mean full on cartoon papa bear snores. I slept like three hours tonight and considered smothering her with the pillow multiple times. Send me strength. This is only day one. 
The first reaction from Stone 1985 I'm sure mother-in-law would love some alone time with a boyfriend. Hit the spa. You deserve it. Hula Whoop thinks, Can you have someone call you up to come home for an emergency? Can you come down with a sickness bug and spend the day in the hotel spa? The OP replies, I spend thousands of dollars to come here from abroad, so I don't want to miss on a park to avoid her. I've talked to my boyfriend and asked him some ground rules that he will discuss with his mom. Part of it, I will be doing the speaking and catching them up after the convo is over. I won't be doing any more chores for his mom and especially about the snoring thing. Wish me luck. I'm also negotiating a weekend getaway for the trouble when we get home. Just the two of us. On to the next story. Mother-in-law seems to live in a different reality. I'm sorry if the story is long and my wording is not the best. English is not my first language, but I feel like I need to vent as anonymous as possible. Too long didn't read. After nearly dying and losing my child, my mother-in-law proceeds to tell everyone how bad at parenting and basically living we are. So my mother-in-law is and has always been painting a picture of herself being super friendly and helpful and supportive. But in reality, she just shames me and my husband for basically everything. Things got worse when I got pregnant. It's her first grandchild. So she was really emotional and over the top. Unfortunately, I developed a preeclampsia and they had to deliver the baby via C-section after just 28 weeks of marriage. When they first visited after two weeks, she simply had a breakdown telling us how difficult the last days had been for her with her first grandchild in the NICU. She never asked how we felt. I obviously wasn't in good health because I nearly died just a few weeks ago, but she told my husband I had taken the easy way with a C-section. She has had such a difficult birth with him and I should stop complaining. From then on, she proceeded to talk to the extended family and friends about everything of our child's development and health, to the point that strangers messaged us for advice. The birth is more than two years ago, but our child still needs therapy and medical help from time to time. Last time we went to the hospital for pneumonia, she told the family it was just a cold we couldn't handle and I would refuse to give the child real medicine. For context, I'm a nurse and my husband a special needs teacher. If we don't raise our child like she would, she threatens to call CPS on us. The reason can be that there is dust on the top of the cupboard or we are using cloth diapers instead of disposable ones. There are many more reasons she is difficult to handle, but that sums it up pretty good. My husband and me are on the same side, but it's still hard for him to see his mother act like that while my parents are the most supportive and lovable. We are trying to set boundaries, which she tries to ignore, so we are threatening her with reducing contact even more. That's kind of working, but it troubles my mental health to continuously dealing with her. Thanks for reading. Our first response from Stone 1985 Any threats of CPS and child and I would go no contact. Threats to involve the law for petty reasons are not okay. Creme de Maron If we don't raise our child like she would, she threatens to call CPS on us. That's your cue to stop her visits. She is very toxic, pretty narcissist, and can't respect you, your parenting, or your boundaries. It doesn't matter she's your significant other's mother. Do not allow her in your little one's life anymore. Prioritize and protect your nuclear family. While your significant other can be struggled to contact with her straight away, you and little one have no obligation to keep her in your life. Your significant other has to enforce your boundaries with consequences when she disrespects you, crosses the line, or simply is awful, toxic, manipulative, or threatens you. Show her that you don't tolerate her behavior at all. Show her that you are the parents, this is your house, and she has no say, no power under your roof. Henry Belendry chimes in, take notes and screenshots of any texts, etc., where she states she will call CPS. If she ever does call, you'll have the proof that she's been threatening it all along over trivial things. But honestly, anyone who threatens you with CPS should not be around you or your child. The OP replies, she never leaves any written proof, just dropping it here and there and never with any witnesses. Even if she demands to have the child over for the weekend, etc., she never will be with her unsupervised. Not alone because of the medical issues, but also because she was kind of abusive parenting my husband. We are on low contact, but no contact would mean no contact to the whole extended family, which would be a really big step. 